Hello and welcome to the video for what is a struct. Well, first of all, we need to determine why we would want to use a struct. Let's say, for example, we have a simple role playing game. I'll play my example here. And we do damage, and the orc takes damage. Well, the orc is named orc, so we have an enemy name variable, for example. And the orc has health, so we have an enemy health variable. And let's say we want to add more stats like armor and mana and strength, maybe agility, maybe a weapon. All of a sudden we're going to have 10 different variables for that one enemy, all named different things, all in different places, not really organized. Well, that is what a struct is for. A struct is a way of organizing different variables into one nice organized structure. So we'll go ahead and we'll go into my generic widget items and we'll create a new struct under blueprints structure and we'll name this one my struct now when you open it up you will see the following page you have the ability to set the variable name and the variable type as well as create a new variable so for our example let's say we want this to be called name and we'll set it to the type of string. Let's add a new variable. We'll name this one health. And we will set this to the type of int. And you could go ahead and you could continue on as many as you want. But for our example, this is all we're going to use. On the right, you'll see the default values. And this is where you can set any of your defaults for any item that is created inside this structure. So we'll just set it to 100. And we'll set the name to monster. We'll go ahead and save that. And we're done. Now, in our example here, I've gone ahead and already created it. I actually have a struct called monster struct that contains the values that we have just created in our example, a name and health. So to go about using it, what you're going to need to know is you need to break it apart, pull any data out of it, and then remake it with the new data and then save it out. So for our example here, I take our enemy, break it into the parts of the structure, which gives me the name and the health variables. I subtract 10 from our health, and then I put it back together with the updated health value and the original name. This gives me a new monster struct that I then reassign and set in the original enemy variable. I have an update health display here, and all this does is simply updates the health you see on the screen. So when we run this and hit play, every time I do damage, the enemy structure is updated and I remove 10 points of damage. So rather than having to go in and keep track of the enemy health and the enemy name and the enemy armor and the enemy weapon all separately, we simply have one item called enemy, which has multiple variables underneath it, depending on what we want. One nice and handy feature of this is, let's say I wanted to have a game where you had three enemies you could attack at one time. Well, then I would have enemy one name, enemy 2 name, enemy 3 name, enemy 1 health, enemy 2 health, and as you can see it would become quite cumbersome. Well, there's nothing stopping you from taking the original enemy itself. Well, actually let's just make a new variable, make it easier, and we'll call this one new, we'll call this one enemies. And we'll go ahead and turn this into an array, and now we have an array full of structs, full of variables for our enemies. So in here, you'll notice we have different elements. And each element contains the variables and that's it you would work on it in a you know you would take your actual enemies and then you could break it apart by getting the correct one and then you break that apart into your monster struct and then there's your variables for the first one one thing that's handy is you can actually take your enemy once you have your struct here where it shows a monster struct structure and you can split the pins directly here instead of having to break it apart. This is nice and handy if you just need to pull something out and you can actually not have to use the break node. And that's it. That's a simple use for the struct. Go ahead and use it to organize a bunch of variables into a nice, happy, organized organization.